All right, let's get started on painting. So we're gonna need our watercolor sets. We're going to need a brush. Um, I'm just gonna use one brush the whole time, but if you do have a larger and a smaller brush, that's fine too. Um, paper towel for the lifting wet technique and a glass of water. And uh, depending on what techniques you decide to use, you may need some additional materials. So for myself, I stuck to the graded wash. I did some lifting wet and I did some wet on wet. And that was pretty much it. Oh, I did a little bit of dry brushing. So I recommend sticking to two to three techniques when you're doing your watercolor insect. I looked up a photo of my insect online and just to see what colors it was and what kind of textures it had. And I noticed that it had this reflection spot on the shell where the light is hitting it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use lifting wet technique for that or I could use wax resist. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try lifting wet. So I'm gonna start by making a wash. And this time I'm gonna really get into mixing colors. So I'm gonna take some green. Um, I'm actually gonna take this green from my palette and I'm gonna mix a wash with it. And then I'm going to use a complementary color. So I'm gonna actually mix in a little bit of red and because green and red are across from each other on the color wheel, it's going to make my, my green a little bit, kind of a little bit more brown. And I feel like this is something that um, nature, artists that paint nature sometimes do, sort of to make their colors a little bit more realistic. So I wanna practice mixing colors with this uh, project. So I've mixed a little bit too much and now it's a little bit too brown and I wanted to go for more of a brighter green so I'm just gonna mix in some more green. And remember I can always test out to see if the color, uh, you know, if it's what I want, I can test it on sort of a scrap sheet of paper. So I like it, I'm gonna go for it and what I'm gonna do is a graded wash. So I'm going, I'm going to paint a stripe of green on either side because the bug is round so I want it to be darker on the sides and lighter in the middle and so I'll do two stripes of darker green and instead of dipping back into my paint I'm going to dip into the water and do a stripe of water and dip into the water again do another stripe of water just I think that's enough water so I'll just leave it like that. So we're trying, that was a graded wash, but instead of on like a little square like we did with our techniques video, it's on an actual drawing that we've done. So now I'm dipping my, my brush directly into my paints and I'm just doing some wet on wet. And then, like I said, I was going to do the lifting wet. So I grab my paper towel and just press it onto that light spot of the shell to make it look like a reflection. And then if I don't like it, I can always add the paint back over top of it. So I'm also gonna add some brown because my picture that I found online, it had kind of a green and brown shell. So I'll just do some wet on wet on the back of the shell with the brown. So I'm choosing what techniques I want to use. I'm choosing which techniques would work and which ones would be most appropriate for my particular bug that I'm painting. And I'm also choosing the colors. I am looking at a picture for this one, um, but I also am sort of taking my own, like choice, I'm making my own choices as an artist as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it slow and I'm going to kind of fill in all of the areas of the bug, uh, making choices for color as I go. And um, if there's an area where it's touching another area that I wanna paint, that's when I might want to let it dry. 
So if you can see at the, the body, like the shell of the beetle, it has a lot of paint pooling there at the bottom. I'd probably want to stay away from painting those legs at the very bottom for a little while just until it dries. So then I could start working on my other side with my other bug. Um, but I, I actually, I'm just going to be try to be careful and, and work all on the one bug. So I'm mixing a brown that I'm going to use for the top part of the body and the legs as well. So I will start the time lapse right here and uh, we'll just go through the rest of this side. While you're working, I just want to show you something really magical with watercolor. So let's say you accidentally have an area that dripped or you don't like it and you want to get rid of it. So it works best if the paint is still wet, but if you take your brush with only water, just water by itself, and you paint over top of it, it'll lift the paint up a little and then you can take a paper towel and just suck the rest of the paint right up and it says as if it never happened so you can always kind of erase your watercolor this works best with watercolor paper but it will probably still work to a degree in your visual journals as well so i'm happy with my brown and green beetle so now i'm going to do another one with i'm going to do sort of orange and brown um, because I sort of saw one that looked like that online, but you can kind of create your own um, creative color schemes for your insects as well. And I then let my bugs dry, and now I'm just sort of doing some final touch-ups and, and darkening some areas. So with watercolor, a lot of times we're building up. Um, so we do sort of layers, we do a lighter wash, first and then we do darker uh, for details so this is the layer where I'm gonna start to do sort of some dry brushing and uh, those kinds of things and I'm not mixing washes as much I'm actually just dipping almost right into my paints for uh, for those and I've let my background washes dry so that what I'm doing is actually gonna like it's not just gonna it's not just gonna blend with all the water right it's actually gonna stick around um, so yeah that's my my next step is just to add some more paint add some detail build up those layers and if I ever do something I don't really like just dip your brush into water and you can, you can almost erase what you've done, right? You can always kind of go back if you do something that you don't really like. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see your wetlands watercolor insects. Have a great day.